Hey guys, it's Mathlo here once again, and I want to make a sort of follow-up video uh, on the Scorching Ray character and Scorching Ray skill, so I want to make just a quick sort of a video, or at least quick by my standards, talking a bit more about the endgame potential of the skill and what I feel about it since I've had just another couple of days to play around with it. The first video I released uh, just kind of mashed everything together because I got up to tier 11s, I then skipped everything and went straight into tier 16s, did the Guardians, did Shaper, did Uberit Siri, and then made some conclusions. Um, over the past couple of days I've had a chance to go back and map in the tier 11 to 16 category some more, and play out the character up till about level 90, and it's been quite a lot of fun actually. I've sort of changed my tune on the skill a bit, where I thought it was just okay, but at this stage it's kind of grown on me and I almost even like it, I'm gonna say. Uh, it was kind of an enjoyable experience to end game map. It's very similar to Essence Drain in the sense that you can do almost every single map mod and uh, you're not affected by Reflect, and it's a degen. So it's rather similar to Essence Drain. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Uh, it doesn't have to abuse Decay though to get to similar sort of levels, I feel. So it's got that going for it. Overall, it was kind of a fun character. Once I got the attack speed, cast speed um, up to date, and the damage, it did really end up being quite enjoyable to map with, and I could do it for a few more levels, and I may even do another Scorching Ray character in the future, though initially I thought I wouldn't be playing another one of these because it just wasn't enjoyable enough for me. At this stage, I'm reconsidering that, and I may play a life-based or a CI one in the future, and I'll go over why that might be uh, in the next mm, few minutes. Essentially, low life might just not be the best use of currency for a build like this. You'll get very similar results out of a CI or out of a life-based character, and low life doesn't really bring too much extra to the table in terms of damage potential or survivability or really anything except for some extra aura reservation, I'm going to go ahead and say. So I did um, go ahead and do quite a few extra Shaper and Uber Ziri and all that, and a lot of them were deathless, and it made me kind of rethink the character in general about how much I enjoyed playing it. So the point of the video was to kind of just catch you up on a few extra things that I may have uh, missed or learnt since then about Scorching Ray and the character itself. At this stage we did hit level 89 and 23.5k unbuffed uh, Scorching Ray damage with a 38k buffed Scorching Ray which includes Witchfire Brew, Sorrow of the Divine, and as well as that um, triggering elemental overload, so it's most of the time going to be this type of buffed DPS, and uh, it's a lot more than I initially started out with or thought I'd hit. And one of the major changes I made was just to get some fingerless silk gloves, crafted some random pair, and made an opal ring with Essences of Anger, which gives you a total 50% uh, fire damage there, which is fairly worth doing if you can get your hands on something like this, just grab an opal ring and put some Essences of uh, Anger against them, because it's worth something like 1.5. 3,000 tooltip, uh, very strong for just a ring slot. Now one of the main things I wanted to talk about was um, I did try, I suggested increased burning if you didn't have any you know, good level and powers as your sixth link, if you happen to have six links. Uh, increased burning I knew was going to be pretty bad, but I had no idea it was this bad. It's just 68% increased burning damage. Now, compared to Empower, that is a huge damage loss, 23.5 down to 17.9. But the real surprising thing is, increased burning is worse than a level 2 Empower. So, on a 5 link, you're at 16.7 thousand damage per second. Increased burning, 17.9. That's a 1.2k increase. Now, level 2 Empower is just plus 1 level gem. And it already beats Increased Burning by a good 1,000 tooltip or so. A level 3 Empower gets you up to 21,000. So really, uh, your 6 link should be pretty much any sort of Empower if you can get one. At least a level 3 is actually pretty good for your tooltip. Uh, increased Burning, I guess, is just something you're going to use if you can't possibly even get a level 2. And you somehow, by some miracle, have a 6 link instead. Now the reason increased burning sucks so much is because it's just increased burning damage. It's not more, it's just adding to the huge amount of increased damage you already have. If you have something like 500% increased damage, which you should, from uh, your burn, your elemental, your spell damage, your damage over time, another 68% really isn't much being added on top of that, as opposed to a more multiplier uh, like your, let's say, 
controlled destruction, 44% more spell damage. As well as that, uh, Empower usually goes up by something like 10% uh, spell damage per level, so they're usually rather worth doing. Now, the other thing we did kind of learn is you don't really need uh, to be low life at all. A good searing, just using a searing touch on, let's say, CI or a, a life base build will actually be really quite nice for your damage and very comparative to low life build. So with that 23.5k tooltip standing around here, uh, just replacing the entire setup for a searing touch, uh, you don't need increased uh, faster casting just for the sake of this uh, test, so we'll leave that out, that's not really a problem. Searing touch is actually very very competitive and it's not even the best option. Ideally you would go for like a plus 3 staff or a plus 3 bow and then be either CI or life based because fitting all this in with life, uh, a low life base is probably a bit too hard on your defenses. But as you can see right here we're now 23k, that's without the low life bonus. So Searing Touch makes up the low life bonus entirely by itself. Um, and then if you really want to go absolutely crazy um, and get the low life bonus in too, we need to grab Blood Magic, uh, Discipline, and turn that shit on. And all of a sudden we're at 30.9 thousand. That's a gain of like 8,000 right there. Uh, 30,000. Gain of 7,000. Um, so, yeah. I don't think you'd need to stack it with low life. S since my damage is more than adequate, I'd say, in my current version as low life. And a Searing Touch is just a good baseline weapon. If you can get a plus 3 staff, that's plus 2 to fire skills and plus 1 to all skills, then it will be even bigger because that will scale your Empower as well as your Searing Scorching Ray to uh, become something like, I don't know, fucking six, five extra levels in the end, I think. And that becomes quite nuts. Uh, so that's something you probably want to look into instead of the low life option. This is how I've built my character. This is all I know at the moment. But I do think it's probably going to be worthwhile to uh, drop Pain Attunement, go up to Chaos Inoculation, grab Infused Shield, build more of a CI based character. And I think that opens you up to become an occultist a bit more, since you may even be using a bow and then a quiver, the Soul Strike, in that place. And. In the end, you don't get as much out of Templar Inquisitor because you probably won't be triggering your Instruments of Virtue that often with a Staff or with a Bow unless you're Leap Slamming a lot and that'll feel terrible or you're Blink Arrowing and Mirror Arrowing and that'll feel terrible or you're Frenzying with your Bow, which will probably also still feel terrible. So in the end, you might want to go Cultist instead and all you're really losing out on is Augury of Penitence and you more or less make up the uh, regen with the Occultist regen instead of um, all of this here. Or you could go completely life-based, run, let's say, a Searing Touch and a Combs and that would be really good for your defenses too and certainly an option as well. Or you could go completely life-based and use a plus one level of Socketed Gems Tabula which becomes rather insane with an Empower as it gives you plus four. So one, a plus one Socketed Gems Tabula ends up giving you uh, five extra levels instead of just three extra levels from your Scorching Ray and that's quite a large damage gap to breach that way too and that's very viable with a life based character just build defensively everywhere else and I think you'll be good to go which is probably what I'll do next time I try and make a Scorching Ray character go with a Tabula or a Scor uh, Searing Touch and um, not build low life because it's become kind of unnecessarily expensive I do think now one other thing I wanted to mention was that Scorching Ray turns out to be pretty fucking good for Grand Master map farming and clearing. Uh, as you can see here, this is the Dynast Tank Super Regen character. Really doesn't stand a chance against the mechanics of Scorching Ray. Uh, I think a really good farmer would be probably a life-based or a CI character and with some Scorching Ray action. Basically, the mechanics of the skill make it so you're always going to be stacking this fairly large dot onto the enemies and also reducing their fire resistance as you stack it and it just is a crazy amount of damage for these exiles. Uh, one other thing I'll say is I don't think it's going to be a great leveling skill for the start of a league with absolutely no currency but by all means do what you think you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time.